I think that up until now, supermarket uh, management has been able to take advantage of the shopper. And uh, up until now, we just complain to each other and we complain to our husbands and just let it go with that. You know, we'd come home. I don't think anybody ever comes home from a, a shopping trip in good spirits. I think we all come home fit to kill. They'll mark steak one price and you'll go there to buy it and it's filled with fat. And right next to it, you'll see a beautiful steak, the same cut, but it's marked specially trimmed. And it's maybe 10 to 20 cents a pound more. All right, maybe it's five cents cheaper than the regular price, but why do they advertise it as a sale? After all, we, we all have brains in our heads. We weren't, you know, we weren't born to be housewives. We've done something else. Why do they try to pull the wool over our eyes? If we go and we see a piece of meat that is full of fat, that adds on, and we're paying for it. And what do we have to do with it? You have to cut it off and throw it out. Marketing is based upon mass display. Uh, you will find many times that uh, in a supermarket uh, that uh, uh, items uh, will be displayed with ten facings across a, a, a line and another one having only one or two facings. The one that has ten facings will sell, even though uh, it may not be uh, a better known brand. It will sell faster than the one that has only one or two. We have all kinds of tie-ins all over the store. That's what we call merchandising. If uh, we depend on the customer to buy uh, a particular item in a particular section of the store, then we certainly would not uh, be doing very much business. But by reminding the customer that they can use another item in connection with that particular item, while well, we made two sales at one time. It's not any different. You can't say, well, if I don't like it here, I'll go here, because the practices are pretty common among all supermarkets. How about stamps? I personally find that supermarkets that carry stamps are higher priced. And I have home a drawer full of stamp books. And you know, somehow I never get around to going and exchanging them. And when I do, I find the merchandise is inferior. There's a 2% markup on everything we buy in a store that deals with trading stamps. They're making, they could make 2% more profit on everything, or they could give us 2% savings on everything that we buy if they eliminated trading stamps. We're not asking for anything exceptional. We're not asking them to give us the meat at ridiculous prices. We're willing to pay a fair price. But why do they have to go out of their way to cheat us? We have wine right next to the uh, deli case where we have our kosher items and franks, miscellaneous uh, dairy items and it's a good tie-in and it certainly creates a lot of sales. You wander through the aisles and you find yourself filling up the cart. <laughs> when you get up to the checkout counter, you discover you spend an awful lot of money and you can plan on it. So it does, I think when they're placed attractively, it does make a difference. If I shop by myself, I can get away with a lot less than when I come with a, I have two others and there's always somebody's got a hand on the shelf for something that I hadn't planned on buying when I came in. If she were to go to other stores, she would really buy it in the haberdashery stores, in the five and dimes, in the uh, discount department stores, and uh, we're only trying to capture as much of that dollar as we possibly can. Many ladies like it very much. Uh, they appreciate it because it gives them one-stop shopping. What you're talking about in unplanned, unplanned uh, purchases in, in a grocery store are really the avoidance of menu planning. Now, if you really did grocery shopping right, according to our conversation, uh, you'd sit down the first of week and draw up a menu for the week, then put a shopping list against that menu and go in and shop exactly that menu. But what most women generally do is uh, agree upon the central pieces. Oh, I'm going to have roast beef this day and pork chops this day and, you know, central piece. And then buy around it. I think it's a matter, it used to be, let the buyer beware. Mm. And now it's coming to the point where we are saying, let the seller beware. We are intelligent and alert enough to know that they have to account to us and be honest to us. And going back to supermarket and some of the things that they do that can really unsettle you, uh, the very fact that eggs, for instance, can be a certain price during the week. And when the weekend comes about, why they go up about ten how much? Cents ten cents on a dozen. Suddenly, Thursday eggs go up every Thursday, 10 cents. And Monday, they miraculously the chickens cooperate or something, the eggs come down again in price. It's not to be explained. I object to the uh, supermarkets in the produce department packaging the uh, fruits and vegetables in the same wrapping, which you can't see through the bottom, and you're um, forced to buy the amount that they have put in the package. 
you can't select your own fruit and vegetables in most cases and uh, it's it's usually much more than you want or you, you could do with less but you've got to take it the point that comes up again is we have so many experiences we go to the supermarket all the time and there was a time when we were really willing to accept it you know you went in and and the price was uh, thus and such and you bought it and now uh, we're getting very aggressive you go into a store and there's a, a can that was labeled with one label and there's a sticker on top and Lila and the rest of us will very nicely take off the sticker that's on top and say this is the price that you had marked therefore this is the price that we are paying and we're doing it and more and more women are doing it I asked a fellow one day I says how come in this store it's one price at 11 o'clock and if you come in at four it's another price he says, the market changes <laughs> I said do you have a ticker tape from New York that tells you to change the price in three hours and it's true if the food is going the prices go up it's supply and demand. If everybody wants lettuce, they charge 10 cents more. The fact that eggs are not uh, being laid over the weekend or something, or are being laid more that brings the prices down, can't be inflation. The fact that cans that are already on the shelves and are marked higher can't be called inflation. It's sort of, um, shall we say, it's unscrupulous, it's dishonest, picking our <laughs> pockets. I mean, I think there's lots of things we can call it. Uh, I don't believe that's true. We don't uh, change uh, the price of peas uh, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in one day as the stock market would go. I mean, that's ridiculous. We just couldn't possibly operate like that. It's because the wholesale cost or uh, has changed on us or additional uh, contingency cost has changed, whereby it necessitates a change of price, a retail price to the consumer of one penny a can, and it's established by our buyers or by our committees or by some sophisticated body, blended in, however, with the competitive aspects to find out what the other chains are doing so that we wouldn't be outpriced. And, and, and they all find out each other's pricing structure, and then we make the decision to raise a penny a can. We may make the decision on Monday, and it never reaches the store level until Thursday. And if it's Thursday, that's the day, and it raises up, but not... Uh, not some cynical kind of thing that you might be inferring that uh, the supermarket operators are here to uh, uh, to fluctuate the prices from an hour to hour or day to day basis to uh, uh, from the aspect of getting more profit dollars for Mrs. Consumer. This is not true. There are some besides housewives who strongly believe supermarkets are the culprit. Cattle feeder and meat packer Ken Monfort of Colorado uh, is one of those. Live market for cattle went up. Uh, for a while, the supermarket prices did not go up. Uh, then they raised them awfully rapidly and, uh, frankly, haven't lowered them as much as the market has lowered. Why do you think that would be? Oh, for a while, I think they had a legitimate reason that they didn't, uh, didn't cover their costs as the market was going up, but I think uh, that's well past. I think uh, uh, right now they have found they can sell beef fairly high, uh, higher in relationship than they're paying for it, and I think uh, they're enjoying the prosperity. All right, they could make the trappings a little bit nicer, but really when it comes down to it, the money in our pocket is what we want. Now, there has to be some way to coexist. The frequent inability of the small consumer to protect himself against fraud and deceptive practices has led to a call for the creation of a federal department of consumer affairs, well-manned, well-funded, and totally devoted to consumer protection.